Previously on The Bill. I'm the sort of pig that will get you into the pig warehouse. Vince Knight! I never meant it! You find out who did this to us, or I'm coming round for your kids. Come on, Ken. Come on, Ken. Come on, mate. Come on. Come on. We've got two men dead. DC Drummond's been shot. Serious? I managed to stem the blood flow, then he backed out on me. Anything else, Gary? Um, he mentioned one of them. Vince? Vince Foster? I don't know. I saw a transport go off that way, and then I see one running from the scene. He was armed. How long ago? Uh, ten minutes. Can I put a call out to traffic to alert motorways and service stations? And did you get a good look at the bloke? <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. It's too far away. How many men were involved? I'm sorry. That's all I could see. All right, go after him. If he says anything, I want to know. Okay. Well done, Gary. And you all right? I'm more worried about Kent, to be honest, ma'am. Go on, go get some cleaned up. Come on, Ken. Come on. Oh, that's it, mate. That's okay. it. You're doing well. Come on. You're all right. Okay. Come on. Debbie and Juliet said Come Ken was at the police warehouse. Right. Then what the bloody hell was he doing here? Come on, Ken. You're doing great, mate. Come on. God. Two dead bodies. No sign of any other casualties apart from the security guards. What a mess. Okay, Julia, get on to MIT. Tell them we'll see him back at base for a briefing. Sure. We found the security guards bound and gagged. How are they doing? Pretty shook up. They said the gang drove off with the transporter loaded with half a million quid's worth of cars. Oh, well, as soon as they bet, we'll get them interviewed. We're going to need as much detail as we can get. Absolutely, Gov. I suppose to the transporter company, they said their drivers were missing. Right, well, obviously we'll need names and descriptions. Four shows if possible. Well, I've looked at the CCTV. Nothing. Someone's managed to stop the recordings. Samantha's got two more men shot dead down at the embankment. One of whom is Archie Foster. That's her intelligence. We're right. The Fosters were trying to do this place over. Exactly. And Ken Drummond's been injured. How badly? I don't know, but he's taken a bullet. This doesn't make sense. When we came down here earlier, he opened the door, said he was onto something, so how did he get back down to the old embankment? That's what I want to know. Sam, we've got two bodies at the warehouse. Now, the transporter was driven from here to where you are. Now, my guess is that Ken was on it. Secured the area, ma'am. We're doing a search now. I'll go and bring soccer up to speed. Yeah. Yeah, well, by the looks of this carnage, my bet is the people driving the transporter were ambushed. Somebody else must have pulled the Fosters off that transporter and just driven it off. It looks like the Fosters were double-crossed while they were doing over the police warehouse. Right under our noses. Look, Samantha, what's been going on with this investigation? We can undercover. We should have known about this. We've got four bodies and an officer who's looking to be alive. Look. There's a slip road three miles from here, the place they're most likely to rejoin the road. Well, the nearest motorway is the M11. No, they won't get in the motorway. We'd have them in minutes. Well, my guess is they're going to unload the cars, bung them in containers and head straight for the coast. I want a list of all the companies in the area with container loading facilities. And a list of empty warehouses. They're more than likely lined up somewhere out the way where they can unload. Get in touch with Sergeant Smith. I want teams organised to search the immediate area of containers, warehouses, lockups. A lot of it. Yes, ma'am. I want an all ports alert requested. Target the East Coast ports first. Issue the registration and description of the transporter and get details on the stolen cars from DS McAllister. She's still at the warehouse. Sierra Oscar, yes, go. Sierra Oscar 1. Go ahead. Three of the stolen cars were fitted with HZ brand tracers. The company called in and said they picked up the car's signals. Sierra 1 and area cars have been dispatched. Thanks, Kerry. Keep me informed. Well, a bit of luck. We might get a result on that one. I could use a bit of good news. Would you like to get out of the car, please, sir? Get out of the car! What we got here, then? 
All right, what's in the bag? I said, what's in the bag? Don't you speak English? What is? GPS units. The ones we've been looking for. And now all we need are the cars to go with them. Clever stuff, though, way. Eh? They put them in the back of a taxi and then have us on a wild goose chase all day. And meanwhile, they're winging their way out of the country. Got to admire them, though, haven't you? I wouldn't say that in front of the governor. Uh, <laughs> Superintendent, how's the injured officer? We understand he's been involved in some kind of massacre. Can you give any information? Not until the next of kin have been informed, I'm afraid. Well, let's hope you don't end up with any more dead men on your hands, eh? Can you confirm that Acting Detective Inspector Nixon has been heading this operation? Would have thought she'd got more important things on her mind. I will be calling a news conference as soon as I've Like the fact that she's had a kid by a convicted child murderer. I'm afraid I can't comment on the personal situations of members of my team. The Einixon has the situation under control. A lot of sports cars stolen from a police warehouse, four men dead and a copper shot. You call that under control? As I've just said, as soon as I'm appraised of the events of this morning, I'll be in a position to update you. And when will that be? Well, give us a ring if you need to know anything in the meantime. <laughs> You've got my number. <laughs> Kerry, I want a team briefing as soon as possible. The call out, sir. And get me D.I. Nixon now. <laughs> Superintendent O'Caro, would you like to tell me what the hell is going on down there? I think there's been a double cross. There might be two gangs involved, but I can't confirm anything at the moment, sir. Well, I'm not really in a position to say, sir. Because I don't actually know. Yes, sir. No, sir. Three bags full, sir. The GPS units have been found. Cars are long gone. Oh. You've spoken to the super, I see. Yeah. And there's a briefing back at station. Yes, I heard. Hasn't exactly gone to plan, has it? What on earth was Ken still doing at the warehouse today? You told me that you pulled him out. I was expecting Ken for a nine o'clock debrief this morning. When he didn't show, I sent Juliet and Debbie to the warehouse to check what he was up to. Excuse me, Debbie told me that Ken hadn't shown. Where were you? Well, Juliet and Debbie went to the warehouse. He said he was onto something and that he was fine. And you were? Abigail insisted on visiting her father in hospital. I had to sort it, Gov. She was threatening to go to the press with her side of the story. Meanwhile, Ken's life's in danger. You know, we're lucky he's not dead. I told him to pull out. He disobeyed a direct order. Are you on top of this? Abigail sorted. Glenn's out of the way and the press I can cope with. So your mind's on the job? Never been off it. Right. Briefing in ten minutes. I want you to lead it. Gov. Uh, Samantha. Stay focused. Well, I mean, look, we're going to have to talk about the taxi and that. You know, the one you were driving? You know when you were driving? Oh, I don't know why you're bothered. He doesn't know nothing about the police or the warehouse or anything. I'll take them in. You keep the sergeant to speed. Um, the taxi driver had the GPS units in the back of his cab, but we're going to need an interpreter. For him, are you? Oh, nice one. How do you fancy a uh, quick debriefing? You see, Taverner, we've already got our hands full today. We don't look that busy to me. I'm only talking about 20 minutes. You obviously need something to do. Work, maybe. What about the end of the shift? Des, I'm busy tonight. Sarge! Duty calls. Any news on Ken? He's still unconscious. How did this go so wrong? Ken was put into the police warehouse undercover as a security officer, specifically to target another security officer, Sid Wright. Phil had intelligence that he was planning something involving Porsches and Ferraris. Sid Wright, of course, is Archie Foster's son-in-law. Charming family. So Sam was about to pull Ken off the job when Wright got involved in this RTA yesterday. But his injuries aren't consistent with the crash. It looks like he's been given a good hiding. And Ken ignored Samantha. Shows little respect for her authority, and I can hardly say I'm surprised. Yeah, well, Ken was yet to establish when the robbery was going to go down. I mean, there are elements about this job that nobody could have predicted. Especially now Samantha's private life has become a feeding frenzy for these hacks outside. Well, we've still got Ken's statement to come, and that should shed light on some of this. I want to see D.I. Nixon. Well, she's just about to start the briefing. Stop her. Well, with respect, sir, I I've actually talked to Sam, and she assures me that her personal situation is in hand. Are you questioning my decisions, Jack? Sorry to interrupt, but the team's ready for the briefing, sir. I want you to lead the briefing. Well, it won't look good, because Samantha's the officer in charge. I thought I'd made myself clear. Thank you. 
Yeah, it can never be. Right. OK, can we have some quiet, please? Yeah. I want to start by saying that Ken is being treated in hospital. We believe he's lost a lot of blood, but he's not in a critical condition. Okay, thank you, Dear Nixon. I'll uh, take you from here. I'm sorry? Thank you, Samantha. Jack will continue with the briefing. Go. Thanks. And bags at listen, dawn. Look at me! Will you just look, look at me? Look at me! Daniel! Oh, oh, Daniel! Why aren't you listening to oh, me? I, I, just because he dumped you! I said calm down! Whatever he is, I bet he's not you worth it! You want to wake up, Daniel? Daniel. Just jealous! You really want me Will to you make calm down? Get your nose out, you! Hi! Hi! I'm telling you, he's just using you! Is that a fact? Where did you get off trying to be my mum? Telling me what to do! Right! Well, you are asking to be nicked! Leave me! I've done nothing wrong! And stabbing the peace, causing an affray, threatening behaviour, I could go okay. on! So who lives here? It's my place. Where's your mum and dad? I live here with my boyfriend. Boyfriend? Right. Oi. Then I suggest you calm down and go inside. And you, go home. You gonna join me? No, I'll just go with you. Did you not understand, Sergeant Smith? Oi. You got a problem? No. But you will have if you look at me like that again. Go on. So Ken was last seen in the police warehouse by Juliet and Debbie. And now he's lying unconscious in a hospital bed. We need to find out exactly what happened in between to put it there. Yes, sir. And as soon as Ken comes round, he should be able to tell us. Right, MIT here have set up an office in the house. They're going to be leading the inquiry into the four dead men. And Ken mentioned Vince Foster to Gary Best just before he passed out. We'll be concentrating our efforts on locating him. And I'll focus my troops on tracking down the cars. Thank you, Gina. Right, any intelligence on where Vince Foster would go after an attempted robbery? Yeah, well, Vince is as slippery as they come, Gov. He's got a list of addresses which Uniform are looking into now. Right. Good work, Debbie. Are you sure I can't get you anything? No, thanks. Is he awake, Gary? Not yet, Mr Drummond. He's still concussed. Oh. Luckily, the bullet only just grazed him, but he did lose quite a bit of blood. Doctor said he should come round soon, though. I do hope your colleague recovers. What's he on, 24-hour watch? Yeah, that's my job, yeah. I was just telling this man what Ken's been through. It's appalling, isn't it? A police officer getting shot. It's a wonder anyone joins up for the force these days. Did you get the guys that did this? No, not yet, but we will. Well... I hope he does recover soon. Oh, it was a pleasure meeting you. Good luck, Fiona. Thank you. Now you take care of yourself. Did I tell him my name? I don't know. Vince Foster and his father, Archie, shared a very close relationship. There are bound to be reprisals. Well, there's something to look forward to. So I'm like, I've... Listen, I've just heard from St Hughes that Sid White's gone AWOL. Please tell me he discharged himself. That's not what I've heard. The surveillance target at the warehouse. He was a key witness. What else have we got? I'm about to interview the security guard who was assaulted at the warehouse. Well, until Ken regains consciousness, I don't think we've got much else to go on. OK, we'll debrief 1800 hours. Excuse me. I'd like a word, please, Samantha. Yeah. So, was it absolutely necessary to pull me out of that briefing? Yes, it was, Samantha. You're far too preoccupied sorting this business with Abigail and her father. So much so, in fact, that you put Ken Drummond's life in danger. I pulled Ken out of that warehouse operation yesterday. He disobeyed a direct order. Given that you spent this morning at the hospital with Abigail's father, Ken wouldn't have had a hope of reaching you by phone. No, sir, but as the officer responsible, I tasked DS McAllister and DC Becker to check on Ken. They reported he was fine. And then things just happened without our knowledge. And now we've lost our key witness because you didn't post a police guard by his hospital He was bed. having surgery for serious internal injury. Not good enough! Sid Wright was vital in ascertaining exactly what the Fosters planned to do. To be frank, Samantha, you've become too much of a liability to have around at the moment. The press are purely here because you and your private life are causing a huge disruption. 
I've spent my entire life protecting my daughter from this. It hasn't been easy for me, sir, but I can handle it. You have a family. I thought you'd understand. Yes, I do, Samantha. But I'm sorry. A colleague's life was put at risk. Take two weeks' leave and come back when you're refreshed and ready to run your team. Please don't do this, sir. Abigail's father is no longer around and, well, the press will probably find another story by tomorrow. No, Samantha. I don't doubt your dedication to the job or Sunhill. But for now, go home. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sarge, these are the guys who were hijacked on the way to the police warehouse. Get them to the FME. Come on, lads. They've just been locked together in the strands of van for three hours. Imagine that. Surely you can spare us an hour later. Sorry, I can't. Well, what's so important? You don't want to know. Oh, yes, I do. I promised me boys I'd make them their favourite supper. All right. So you'd rather sweat over a hot stove than with your favourite PC, eh? It's not going to happen tonight, Des. Oh, yes, it is. Even if it's only a mead. There's no way any one of us could have anticipated that robbery going down today. I know that, but... Well, did you say that to the super? You know how much pressure I've been under. Where's the support from my boss when I need it? Now, hang on a minute. Did I raise any objections when you dumped Abigail in this office? Or when you took the morning off to sort a father out? Did he give you a hard time about that? I know it's hard for a single mom. I give my all to this job, and you know I work day and night. Why do I get the feeling I'm a convenient scapegoat? Oh, come on, Samantha, that's rubbish. I'll tell you what's rubbish. I love my job. I did the hardest thing I've ever done in my life today. I told my daughter I loved her so much I'd resign for her. I even took a letter of resignation to you. And I would have gone through with it if Abigail had let me. Sam, you are one of the best DIs I've ever had. There's no way I would have accepted your resignation. Just do as the super says, eh? You and Abigail, take a break. And I'll see you back here in a couple of weeks, giving it 150%. Better bow down gracefully, then. Right. Good luck with the case. He's connected to someone. That is the one you were talking about. See you in two weeks, girls. You off, girl? I am. The super's decided I need a holiday with my daughter. Maybe I should screw up. I could do with a break myself. <laughs> Just leave it alone, Stacey. Is my boyfriend now? Just go home. Back, look, if I see your face round here again... You can't stop me! Danielle, can you not see what he's like? Well, I told you to keep your distance. It's OK, I... Uh... I think I've sorted out this petty little argument. Aren't I, girls? Do you want to tell us what the problem is? It's a bit complicated. Yeah, we got that impression last time we were here. Danielle's my girlfriend, right? Your girlfriend? Why don't you go inside, sweetheart? Eh? Don't treat her like that. I'm sorry. Like some kind of dormer. I have to warn you, eh? So that's your girlfriend, and how old is she exactly? Seventeen. Anything wrong with that? Is that right? Something like that. Look, Stacey's never really got over me. She keeps having a pop at me, you girlfriend. You naughty liar! Oi! Oi! That's it! Put it down! I'm arresting you for criminal damage. I'm sorry, not wasting your time. Damn. My sources obviously aren't as accurate as I thought. I'm sorry, Sheila. I heard you were giving some holiday. This looks suspiciously like work to me. Yeah, well, I'm probably going to be climbing the walls after about five minutes. Don't let Abigail hear you say that. She'll just be very pleased to have her mum all to herself. Mm. For a change. I thought that's why the super gave you the time off. You know, forget about this place, spend some time with your daughter. Yeah. That was very nice of him, wasn't it? Apparently not. I don't think Abigail's welfare was the motivating factor. He thinks I'm unable to juggle my family problems with my career. It's not easy to balance the two at the best of times. Oh, come on, Sheila. Look around you. 
The majority of coppers are men. They manage to have jobs and kids. Plenty of them have got more stripes than either of us. Is their ability to cope question when things go a little bit wrong? I suppose not. Their idea of a career woman is someone that has absolutely no life whatsoever outside the job. I'm no disrespect, but I don't want to be Gina Gold. I want to have it all. But I don't see why I shouldn't get it just because I'm a female. Don't you think that sounds a bit selfish? Or do you think the super selfish? Do you see our meadows? Try having it all, Sheila. Put yourself first for a change. You never know, you might enjoy it. You tell me that Ken Drummond is one of yours. He bashed me over the head and left me in a toilet. He was placed undercover once we received intelligence that a colleague of yours was involved in the planning of a robbery. What, as well as Ken? Who? I'm not able to disclose that. Don't bother, I can guess. Said right. So, as a duty supervisor, isn't it your job to thoroughly check all the paperwork and deny or allow access to all vehicles? What? Am I being blamed now? That's rich. What kind of undercover policing ends up in helping to steal six sports cars? Look, all I'm trying to do is establish the facts. I don't want to speak to you. Get me a senior officer. I am a senior officer. I don't think so. Who's in charge here? I need a solicitor. You're only helping with our inquiries, Mr Buzzcock. I won't only be doing that. I'm going to get every penny compensation I can, and I want Ken Drummond charged with GBH. Right. If you'd like to wait here a moment, I'll get the DCI. Has Ken Drummond gone mad overnight? There must be a reason for his actions. He's normally a good, reliable officer. Well, he's not behaving like a reliable officer. I wish you'd tell me you were sending Sam home on leave. Call it damage limitation. So. Oh, and by the way, her status as acting DI remains just that for a while yet. OK, but well, let's work together on this one. I'm two officers down. All this trouble over a man? Maybe John Rutherford's right, maybe you're not over him. He's history for me. I'm more worried about Danielle and him. So worried you hit her and smashed a window? His window. He put her up in the flat, but he leaves her on her own most of the time. He's a bit old for you, isn't he? I'm 18. I'm allowed to like older men. You talk about John Rutherford like he could hurt you, has he? Do you think he might hurt Danielle? Look, I really don't think you should go poking your nose into things you don't know. Please, leave it alone. Has he hurt you? We can help. Oh, sure, just wave your magic wand, it'll all go away. You'll only make things worse. If you don't help us, we can't help you. That was out of order. It was my fault. I lost my temper. Sorry. Mr Rutherford decided not to take further action for the damage to his property. But we will nick you if you go back and you start kicking off again. OK, come on. Let's go. That was a complete waste of our time. Oh, come on, Sarge. Stacey was terrified in there. What, giving it all that mouth and then climbing up like that? She doesn't want us to pursue it, so we save ourselves some paperwork. What is a man Rutherford's age doing messing around with girls that age? You really want me to answer that? What if he is doing something to Danielle? Well, unless she comes to us with some kind of complaint, there's nothing we can do. Anyway, she's hardly the shy retiring type, is she? Well, if she's so scared of him, why is she charging about trying to save her mate? Sarge, I want to go back and talk to him. I just want to check Danielle's all right. There's no way she's 17 years old. Well, I can't spare you. We've got more than enough on our plate as it is. Well, it can take long. Straight there, straight back, all right? This is an ingenious way of getting me near your bed again. Fancy joining me. They haven't damaged your sense of humour, then. <laughs> the 
this. No, I'm starving, love. Uh, can you get the nurse to get me something to eat? Some things never change. wanted to see if you're okay. You don't look it. Never been better. Shame about you and Stacey, isn't it? It's obviously really worried about you to kick off like that. That's life. Can I come in for a chat, Danielle? I can't. I don't want to be back soon. So? What are you frightened he's going to do? Everything's okay. Honest. Are you taking something? You know, if you're being forced to do anything you don't want to do, you don't have to put up with it. Don't let some guy ruin your life. Whether it's John or anything he does, you do have a choice. You know that, don't you? Hmm? Why don't you come with me? We'll have a chat and see if I can help at all. doesn't finish school for another hour. I must admit, I missed you, Ken. So's Alex. Me too. This is a picture of the man we're looking for. Keep your eyes peeled. So are you going to tell me how you ended up in hospital? Hello. Hello. So how are you doing? Yeah, fine, sir. <coughs> OK. Well, we've got it sorted. What sorted? I need to talk to the governor alone, darling. Oh, can't it wait a while? He's not well enough. What, what, what is it that's sorted? This, um, undercover job. They've made certain threats. What sort of threats? It's not against us. No, no, it's all right. There'll be a policeman with you every minute of the day, and we've gone to pick Alex up from school. Are you serious? Aren't you going to tell me what's going on? I mean, who is it that's threatening us? The Fosters, they, they kidnapped me and they uh, forced me to help them rob a police warehouse. Excuse me, sir, but I'm sure this bloke's already been in the hospital today. Wasn't this the man that I was just talking to when they brought Ken in? Gary? Yes, sir, he was in casualty when we arrived. Uh, um, don't get upset, Fiona. Don't get upset? How could you say that when your family's being followed and this man was standing right next to me half an hour ago? Gary, get a car to collect Fiona, take her to the station. I need to talk to Jack urgently. Ken! Jack, please just do as I ask you, Fiona. It's been missing Stacy. You said you two were like sisters. Where are you two going? John, I was Has just... Stacy been stirring things up again? No, she hasn't. What did she say then? She's always trying to split us up, isn't she? Just that she misses Danielle. So I'd rather you stayed away. What's this got to do with you? Danielle knows that I love her, don't you? Thanks for your concern. Why don't you just give us a minute, Danielle? Yeah? I get it. Stacey, she's spun you a line about what a bad man I am. And what, you'd rather take the word of a tart over mine? The reason I dumped Stacey is because I found out she was turning tricks. Ask her. I mean, 
I'm hardly going to be keen on Danielle hanging out with a prostitute, am I? Right. That your way of apologising, is it? Sierra Oscar from 416. Go ahead. Currently at Kenley Comprehensive. Alex Drummond is not at this location. Heading for his girlfriend's house. Oh, what is it about with uniform, eh? Since I've been here, I've been getting the eye left, right and centre, mate, I'm telling you. Maybe I should wear it down the pub. Might get luckier. The way things are going for me at the moment, I'd be lucky to pull a muscle, I'm telling you. This came for you. Brunette, eh? It'll take you a while to get over it, mate. When I was undercover, it was all exciting and all that, but once I had that gun pointed on me, well, I don't know, but I've never been that scared in my life. But, uh, I think I, um, I need a brew. No, no, don't worry about them. I need to go to the loo anyway. business. I have no business with you. You see, that's where we disagree. You didn't see your father gunned down in the street. You, Detective Drummond, you're going to help me find who killed my father and who has my cars. I don't want to do that. You've forgotten our deal. I will kill your father. They're in police custody. Don't you believe me? You're bluffing. Ken, I don't bluff. Listen! And you listen really carefully. If you don't get the information I need, you'll be buying a coffin for your Alex. Alex. It's very poor security at Kenley Comp. Check it out for yourself. Now, if you keep this secret safe, he won't get hurt. Do you understand? Well, that's how it is. But if you squeal to your cop mates, you will never see your boy alive again. What do you want me to do? You remember my brother-in-law, Sid? He had a nasty accident. I heard. No one else knew about that escape route. It's the same person who killed my father got to sit before we did the warehouse job. Now I will find out who. But Sid's disappeared from hospital. So I want you to do some detective work to help me find him. Because you two are the only ones who can help me find who killed my dad. Double check on my family in place, especially Alex. Make sure he's okay. There's no need, mate. I've sent officers round. It's you all just it. do it, Gary. <sighs> the inspector's not gonna like this. He's two hours late for his leg over. And I certainly wouldn't keep the cracking little bird like that waiting around. Are you sure? I think Mars more your type. Yeah, less of the cheek, Grandad. You're no spring shit than yourself. Right, so you can go and fill Inspector Golden, okay? Thanks a bunch. Yeah, well, it's one of the perks of being the new boy, isn't it? I've got some unfinished business in custody. Mum. What? We've got a problem. So have you ordered your husband's takeaway, then? It's not like that. Declan wasn't feeling well. I thought it'd be nice to make him something special. When exactly do you get to have for yourself? Hey, 
Now you come to mention it, I think I might be coming down with something myself. Des. Oh, you haven't kept your nurse's uniform, have you? I think I might be in need of intensive care. I might be able to dig it out. Check in with me at seven. So, you've decided to make some time for me then? And me. I reckon I deserve a break. We better hurry up. I think it's getting worse. Isn't this day going well? Alex Drummond is missing. We've checked the school and he failed to appear for afternoon registration and he didn't make it to his girlfriend's house. Were they due to meet? Like clockwork. Every Wednesday afternoon he gives his double drama class a wide berth, apparently. How worried are we? Very. I talked to Gary and Ken's getting anxious. Right, we're going to need a photograph of Alex. I took the liberty. From Ken's desk, I'll get the troops to check out his other haunts, yeah? Yeah. We're here. Help's here. Right. Sir, ask him three five five. An ambulance required at the service. Do you know who did this to you? Station. Over. Did you see them? Or can you tell me your name? Stacy. It hurts. Right, Stacy. You don't have to move. You mate. I told her not to interfere. Who are you talking about, Stacy? The blonde one. Kerry. PC Young. Please. Find my friend Danielle, Danielle McClendon. She's going to be in big trouble. He's going to take it out on her. Please, you've got to right, find right. her. Now. Please. Well, it's since his dad and me, since we've had our troubles, Alex has really grown up. If he's going anywhere, if he thinks he's going to be late, he'll ring in. Well, perhaps his phone battery's low. Well, it's not likely. He always tells me where he's heading, who he's with, what time he's going to be back. You know what teenage boys are like. He could be doing anything. But that's what worries me. This is just not like him. Are there any relatives he'd visit? What 16-year-old boy do you know likes visiting relatives? This officer will take you home and a liaison officer will turn up within the hour. But stay by the phone and please, try not to worry. Of course I'm going to worry. If your lot can let Vince Foster stalk me at my husband's bedside, well, I'm hardly going to relax when my son's missing. Please don't tell me what you think I need to hear. There's a call for you. <coughs> Thank you. Ken Drummond. Alex, where are you? It'll be okay, son. I'll, I'll, I'll come and find you. Hold tight. Please don't cry, son. Be strong. Alex, please don't. Don't cry, son. Alex? Danielle's flat on the Jasmine Allen estate. Yeah, I know the place. How was she? Oh, there's nobody there. Looks like somebody's cleaned the place out. Oh, great. Okay, thanks for letting me know. I'll take it from here. Good luck. Chemist okay, has got word. Stay see what happened. Danielle rang me. Said you'd been to see her. Said John turned up. Yeah, that's right. Whatever you did got her into trouble big time. And me. She said she wanted to meet up. I thought I might have got through to her. When I got there, someone jumped me. Did you manage to get a look at them? Was it John? It doesn't matter what I think, does it? I told you not to get involved. I told you then to play this. 
Why didn't you tell me the whole truth, Stacey? Tom Rutherford told me you've been working as a prostitute. Is that true? Thanks to him. He set me up in a flat. He started bringing his mates around. The fun. Told me if I loved him, I'd do it. It wasn't too long before I had to see complete strangers and they paid him for it. So yeah, that's what he wants to do to Danielle. He wants to pimp her. There's a lot of perverts out there who will pay a lot of money for a girl like Danielle. Okay, look. Stacey, if you give us a full statement, we can get him to call, we can get him put away. I hate to think what he'll have done to her. And you won't get your statement. Doesn't work like that. Well, it's the way I work. Take this. You find the police. <sighs> That's driving me crazy being stuck in here. Half the force are out there buzzing around looking for Lamborghinis. I mean you were stuck in air, mate. Uh, look, uh, Gary, could you get us some water, please? Why, why, why don't you uh, go for a wander, yeah? Stretch your legs. I'm supposed to be keeping an eye on you. Ken. Ken? <coughs> Ken! <coughs> Ken, just hang on a minute, mate! Nurse! Tells me you're having to wait for a transfer. Does he ask you? Hi, Mum. Well, I hear you're getting in a bit of practice in handling what should have been one of their cases. Since when has domestic violence been a new speciality of yours? Um, it came as quite an urgent call, Mum. And seeing as though Kerry had dealt with the girl previously, I asked her to attend. Then I'm even more surprised. I expected more from you. Please understand your priorities of the day. Ken Drummond's son is still not accounted for. Mom. You didn't have to do that. Uh, yes, I did. You want to try not to get too involved. Take a step back and you'll see the bigger picture. You too. Very intimate. You'll be asking out for a drink next. Yeah. In his dreams. Have you seen him yet? No, keep looking. <sighs> you know, I think I've your Ken Drummond about 5 8, not in the Oh, sorry. So are you all right, mate? Are you all okay? Fine. Ken Drummond, big fella, about 5'8". Eh? Detective, gunshot. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, you like that? Gunshot wounds. You're not seeing the bloke. You're okay then? Yeah, yeah. Fine. Yeah, fine. Just a little tired, you know? No, it don't matter. Gary Gray Air, if you could check that way for us and I'll check that way. Nice one.
Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Let's just get you back, Ken. Just walk away. Ken, I'm gonna call base. This isn't a game. Vince Foster does not mess around. He will kill my son. What are you on about? Look, his father's been shot. He's been ripped off and he's out of control. Ken, I don't know what you're doing. He wants answers and I have to give them to him. Gary, can't go. I won't let you. And you can't stand in my way. Call it in. You'll need assistance. No, no, no. If he gets a sniff, the police room. You can't handle this on your own, Ken. Listen to me. Your skinny career, your reputation, everything you've ever worked for. He's got my son, Gary. He's got Alex. If I don't give Vince Foster what he wants, Alex is as good as dead. Are you all right? It's family trouble. You sure? Yeah. We're going to need help on this. No. Please don't call it in. Please. Next time on The Bill. Hold on, Gary. I know this is the right place. Wait, Clark. Get! Gary! If she catches us, it won't just be the end of us. It'll be the end of a lot more than that. She's got a lot of proof. It's only a while, guess. Stay there. I said stay. I've got two hours.